Okay, so to recap where we're at, we have our parent list issues and our child list times. On the display form for issues, we've added the time list to it, and then we set up a web part connection so that it only shows the time entries that correspond to that issue. We then added a script to the page, and what that script did is it found the new item link and, and, and modified it so that it passes in the ID of our parent to the new item form of our child as a query string parameter called issue ID. Okay? So the next thing we need to do is add a script to the new item form for our time list, for our child list, so that it reads that query string parameter of issue ID and automatically sets this issue field to that value, right? So we don't have to click need more RAM. And to do that, we're going to use this script. So let me walk you through the script real quick. Uh, again, we're referencing the jQuery library from Microsoft's Content Delivery Network. Uh, and then the first thing we do when the page loads is we're getting that query string value of issue ID that we pass in from the parent, and we're storing that in a variable called issue ID. The next thing we're doing is we're going to look for that lookup field, that lookup field that has the display name of issue. And we do that by saying, find the select on the page that has the title attribute set to issue, which is the display name of the field again. And we're going to set the value of that select to our issue ID we found from the query string. So it's important to note here that in SharePoint 2007 and in SharePoint 2010, when a lookup field went over 20 items, it was changed from a select into an input field. However, that does not seem to be the case with SharePoint 2013, at least at this point. Uh, there may be some magic combination that turns it into an input at some point, but I added 57 items to a lookup last night, and it still was a select. So we don't have to do any logic to check to see if an input or a select is there. We can assume for now that it's going to be a select, and we set its value to our issue ID. The next line of code here says, find that select field again, and we're going to disable it we're going to add a disabled attribute and set its value to disabled. So that'll make it the, so the users cannot change the value of that lookup field. If you want to, I've also added a line of code here that would hide that row entirely. I didn't want to do it for this because I wanted you guys to see it happen so you know I'm not making things up, but you could just uncomment this line of code and it would hide the row entirely. So here's our script for the new child form and we are going to now add that to the page. So we go to our time list and we want to edit the new, the default new form. So let's add a web part and let's wait. Maybe click again. It didn't, didn't take take the first time knowing SharePoint. Come on SharePoint, add a web part. Web part. Add a web part. So let's try it again, right? This is a preview. You have to do things several times. So we'll go back to our time list, list, form web parts, default new form, add a web part. There, it worked that time. We want to add media and content, content editor. We're going to add the web part. So let's go ahead and edit that web part. We want to link it. Great, thanks. So we need to go back to site. Don't you just love SharePoint and love previews? I'm going to leave this in the video because I want you guys to see how wonderful my life is right now with this. Go back to time. List. Form web parts. Default new form. Our content editor is still there. We want to edit the web part. Here it is, content link. So let's go to dot dot slash dot dot slash site assets slash new child dot JS, I believe was the name. Let's test the link. That's what it was. Let's apply it. And let's stop editing. Now we've got our script added to the page. So if we go to the issues page and we click on need more RAM, we say bought more RAM, let's add a new item. And look, need more RAM is automatically set for us and we cannot change it. So we can say bot more RAM and save that. 
So if we go back to our issues for need more RAM, we can see there are now two entries. Bought more RAM, bought some RAM, and bought more RAM. And if we add another item, a new item, you can see need more RAM, still more RAM purchased. And there it is. We go to the other issue that we had. Need a bigger SSD. And you can see if we add new item there. Need bigger SSD is set for so we don't have to set that. So there you have it. Uh, except for the flakes of dealing with the preview of the application and the it all seemed to come together in the end work. So uh, not too hairy. And uh, that's how you're going to get your parent childless relationships working. I uh, hope you learned something and uh, hope you have some can have some fun with this. Thanks.